Morning, Karen. Morning, Roshan. How are you both? Good. How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Absolutely thrilled uh, that you've taken some time out uh, to talk to Protagia TV today about your uh, your new film, Seven Days. Um, so I imagine you've been in the UK for a few days now uh, promoting the film as part of BFI's uh, London Film Festival. So firstly, how has that experience been for you so far? Oh yeah, it's been really nice. It's uh, uh, London at least feels like a lot more open than America right now in terms of just, uh, you know, theater and restaurants and all that. So we first got here, we we're like, oh my gosh, where are the masks at? Uh, but then we're now just used to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we're like leaving the house without a mask and feeling fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty lenient over here in terms of... Um the restrictions that we were all played with last year, but uh, how has the, uh, the the festival, the premiere here compared to that of Tribeca earlier this year? Uh, it, Tribeca was a hybrid festival, so it was partially, okay. partially virtual and the in-person events were limited by COVID restrictions at the time. So they were not as well attended um, because of the constraints of the festival. But here in contrast, we've had three screenings versus the one we had at Tribeca and they've all been fairly large in size. Um, and they've been more of the sort of proper theatrical indoor environment versus the outdoor screenings we had at Tribeca. So it's been really cool for us to see. Also, it feels at least like the Asian population is, is bigger here <laughs> than it is in America or at the very least at Tribeca. So we've just seen so many Indian people watching the movie, which yeah. we had never experienced before. Oh yeah, I'm glad you've received a really good reception. Um, now, I'm not privy to any trailer and I haven't caught a screening of the film myself yet. Uh, so for everybody at home watching, could you just tell us what the film's about in as much detail as you can? Yeah, the movie's about uh, these two Indian, young Indian people who meet on an Indian matchmaking website, much like Shadi.com or something like that. Yeah. And, um, very quickly realized that the way they were presented in their profiles is very different from how it is in real life. And then a bunch of twists and turns happen. I love stand up. Have you ever done stand up? Mm. No. <laughs> now. <laughs> I mean, you could do stand up for me right now. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to do, let's do stand up. Okay. Um, now, Roshan, I know that this is your uh, directorial feature uh, debut, so I should probably say a huge congratulations on that milestone at this point. Um, I gather this film wasn't years in the making, given the nature of the story. Um, so, at what point in your own lockdown ennui last year did was this idea even born? When did you realize that you wanted to put a put a you know a, a, a cinematic spin on uh, you know coronavirus itself and actually make a movie out of it in the form of a romantic comedy? Yeah, I think it, I um, am also a physician, and I finished residency in June of 2020, okay. and had a large gap before I started my consultant position in November, and in that gap. Um, because both of us had worked in the industry for many years, we were suddenly not working um, as a result of the lockdown and really felt this hunger to make something and do something with our, our creative side. So that's when we conceived of the movie. Um, okay. Yeah. And did you know that you always wanted to bring uh, Karan on board to co-write the script with you? Yeah, we're dating. So we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we conceived of the project together and, yeah. and wrote it together with with current destined to be in it from the beginning and yeah it was our little quarantine project that's now a feature film that's playing in theaters it's yeah really crazy. It's, all, it's incredible <laughs> Karen, um when you approach the script what themes were integral to incorporate it when you were uh, thinking about the perspective of um of, of both of our protagonists yeah, uh, I think the thing that we were both really interested in uh, depicting was just a different look at arranged marriages, because uh, we both come from like a long line of people who have had them. And oftentimes, at least in America, you mentioned that and people look at you like it's like barbaric or something. Mm -hmm. But like my parents are still very in love and they met uh, through arranged marriage. So I think we really just wanted to showcase like a different side of that and just a different side of maybe some things about Indian culture that people weren't as aware of. And hopefully we've done that with the movie. 
Did you go on any um, actual uh, arranged marriage uh, dating sites um, or apps to actually look at how people uh, use these, the, you know, this sort of technology for inspiration? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've both been on the websites uh, just to look, but I've actually literally been on them as, okay. a, as a member before I came out three years ago. I was. So you were on, probably drawing from your own experiences at some point. I was on Chadi.com. Literally. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, I, my mom made the account, but I was on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah is no, that, we, is, is, Was that sort of um, the genesis of where this idea came from initially? As I said earlier, it's something that you thought exists in, in our culture, but you decided to put a cinematic spin on it because you'd already experienced something like that before that we see from the character. Yeah, I think we both really were like, we would just look at some of these profiles and just be like, this is so funny. Like, we would just read them like we were reading The New Yorker or something, just very intensely being like, this is very funny. And then, um, it, yeah, when we were thinking of ideas for the movie, we were like, what if it's something in this world? And then it just all sort of clicked together. It, I think this part of it came a little bit later. Originally, we were like, how can we make something in COVID of last summer when nothing was happening? And it became clear it had to be like one or two actors and like not too many locations. And, and then we were like, what's the story that fits in that? And then sort of this angle came to life. Um, yeah, that, that leads me to ask actually, uh, given the inherent restrictions of last year, what limitations, if any, um, did you face during production? Was this, some, was this easier or harder for the uh, DP? It was harder for everybody because mm. we uh, had to test for COVID every other day in order to have results within the 72 hour framework. And we had to use a lab that was in LA even though we were shooting many hours outside of LA and ferry the test back and forth to the lab and then get the results just in time to begin shooting the next day. And because the cost of that whole apparatus was so expensive, it limited the number of crew we could have and the number of days that we could shoot for. So it um, completely kind of curtailed the parameters of the movie. Um, it was shot in eight days, which is um, wow. far below the bare minimum <laughs> for a movie. If a yeah. typical low budget movie is 20 days, this was less than half of that. And then we had a crew of 11 and the DP was also one of the camera operators because he had to serve in both roles. There were only two camera operators. So it was an insanely, insanely complex endeavor. Um, yeah, also the crew had not worked since March 15th or whatever of 2020 so yeah. we shot at the end of August so it, it's unusual for crew to not work for six months because they sort of go from job to job yeah. so it was kind of this weird thing of like sort of what's happening in different stages of the pandemic now when people are like going to parties again and being like how do I do this socializing yeah. thing it's sort of the similar thing where we're like is it different and then we're like I guess it's kind of same but different and everyone's sort of figuring that out now sets have been open for so long people are sort of used to the mass yeah. and all that but it was very very new yeah we shot in September and it was really it was a crazy time to be shooting September of 2020 okay um the title of the film is seven days so it's it's obvious that uh, the story takes place over a seven day uh, quarantine period um so in that week um how what did you do for the script to ensure that both of them had a significant character arc in such a short space of time to really develop the relationship? Yeah, it's um, I don't want to give too many spoilers away, <laughs> okay. so it's really hard to answer that question <laughs> without giving spoilers. But uh, in general, it was less about like, I'm not so sure that I personally as a writer am that uh, into the whole theory of people having to have very concrete arcs where they change dramatically in the course of a movie. I think that movement in real life is, is slower and more gradual and the arc is sort of an artifice that we put into narratives. So I don't know that it follows that model precisely, okay. but some things do change and their relationship certainly changes. Sure, that's just something uh, we have to look forward to. Um, yeah. uh, the story, the tale of uh, two, divergent personalities uh, rather um potentially falling in love isn't necessarily a new one um especially in south asian culture um given the anathema that is uh, arranged marriage so how is this one different how does this particular relationship uh, or the way the story pans out different to what we're probably used to seeing already 
Uh, just because it's a Western movie ultimately, and it yeah. is a rom-com that involves arranged marriage, which is unusual, at least uh, among the movies that have been made on this side of the world. Um, I do think that uh, it, 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 it deals with the debate between arranged marriage and love marriage in a very sort of explicit way that we thought was original. <laughs> yeah, it's a meet cute where the meet cute is arranged by our Indian parents for months of them talking and then you meeting. So that's a different kind of meet cute. <laughs> I'd say COVID was probably the meet cute for them as well. <laughs> Circumstantial. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, your co star, um, uh, she plays the role of Rita um, it's, and she's played by uh, Geraldine uh, Viswanathan. How early was she brought on um, uh, into the project? When did you realize uh, she was going to uh, fit the role? Yeah, um, I have worked with Geraldine since 2017. We're on a TV series called Miracle Workers together. So we, as we were writing, you know, right, the first person we thought of was her and we're like, would she do it? Would she do it? Um, and she was at the time quarantining in New York and we're like, I don't know if this is going to work out. Um, and then as soon as we sent, uh, finished the script, she was the first person we sent it to pretty much before sending it to the Duplass brothers, anyone. And um, she read it sort of right away and she was like, let's go. And then we couldn't believe it. <laughs> like it's happening. She's going to do it. And she brought so much uh, to the movie. Like uh, we were always talking about it after every screening. We're like, God, like she really elevated everything that was in the script. Um, and then it was really nice too, because, you know, it was a stripped down production. We didn't have any trailers or any of the amenities that you would usually have on like a bigger thing. Yeah. And so it's always hard, you know, for us, we're like, we'll do whatever, like blood, sweat and tears. Cause you know, we wrote it and we we're putting our own like, like effort into it. But when someone else joins a production, it's really nice when, you have a shorthand with them because then you don't feel as apologetic all the time being like, I'm so sorry, we don't have, you know, all the snacks that you would usually have or all of those little things. So she was super game and it was a really fun bonding experience. Amazing. Um, well, I don't want to keep you guys uh, too much longer, uh, but I want to know what have you taken away from this whole experience? Um, I have written uh, as a professional screenwriter in Hollywood since 2015 and always waited for permission to make things and always waited for the phone call that something is going into production. And I never realized that whole time that we could just make it as silly as that sounds. And this movie, I think, proved to both of us that we have much more control and agency over what stories get told than we ever realized. Um, so that's the, that's the biggest thing I've taken away. Yeah, I think for me, it's that this movie is very unabashedly Indian. And now we've screened it many times, a lot in America. And now we're noticing here as well that like a lot of people who are non-Indian are relating to it and intrigued by it and wanting to talk about it. And it's a cool thing to be like, okay, there's so many other stories we can tell in this world without feeling like, will anyone watch it or be interested? It seems like there's a real hunger for something that's different and new. Um, and so that's really exciting. And it's obviously proved pretty universal. So well done. Um, you've obviously captured the attention of so many people. Um, final question. Uh, what are you working on at the moment or what can we um, look forward to seeing you in next? Um, we're trying to, we're in the process of figuring out the next movie that we make. We're hoping it's about gay Indian marriage. And then um, we're working on a show for Netflix India that's set in a um, new Delhi house <laughs> <laughs> without I don't think we should say yeah yeah We're amazing. For that, amazing. Yeah. gentlemen it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you both and uh, congratulations again uh, and good luck uh, with uh, the premiere here in the UK thank you thanks for taking the time on a Saturday yeah. Yeah. thank you bye guys take care what else oh in um in high school they used to call me chicken shawarma well it doesn't even make any sense because i don't eat meat and it's sharma not shawarma mm.